Uh, hi guys, uh, in this video I'm going to be taking this old vintage Seiko from the 70s. Uh, case reference is 61195431. Um, I'm going to refinish the, uh, the case here. The, uh, there's quite a bit of damage and scratches and things on this one. Uh, but it has two finishes. So it has a kind of a matte finish on the top that has uh, sort of machining lines in it, which you can't really see nowadays, they seem to have gone. Uh, on the sides, uh, it should be um, highly polished. So there's a few steps we have to go through to achieve all that, and I'll uh, try and demonstrate that for you. Uh, so I'll end this part here. Uh, the next uh, you'll see is when this is all uh, stripped back down. Okay, so now we have the case on its own, and there is some of these, some of the marks on this are quite deep actually. Um, so what I'm going to plan to do is, well, first of all, is show you what I'm going to use to uh, try and get this a lot better. So the trusty old rubbing block. Uh, I've got some P240 wet and dry on there. Uh, I've got another little bit of 240 to do by hand. And then I've got some 400. I may change the 400 also on the block uh, at a later stage. And then I've got this little, uh, it's basically for, for doing your fingernails. Uh, but because it's quite soft, it's uh, good for doing some of the rads in the difficult places. Um, now, of course, on this top, it's nice and flat here, which is quite easy to do. Uh, but you've got this nice round um, end to it. So you've got to be a little bit careful with that. Um, but without further ado, what I'm going to do, once again, offer this up to the block. Now, at this stage, because I'm not worried about the finish, I'm just trying to get rid of the scratches. Uh, I'll do circles or you can do figure of eights if you really wanted to. Um, but we're at the roughing stage and at the roughing stage it doesn't really matter. I'm also going to press, press on quite hard as well. So you can see it's starting to scratch it itself, but we've got a hell of a long way to go. What I'm doing here is to try and get that radius a bit, is to pull it along and move it with the steel, as you can see. And likewise with the the other end. If you wanted to make sure that you were to keeping it completely uniform, you could count the number of ones that you do. So you could do ten that way, and then ten on the other end, and keep them going like that. That's probably more relevant when you get towards the end of uh, of the job, and when you want to make it look, you know, bang on. probably easier also to have this on a flat surface and do it. It's just hard for me to talk into the camera and uh, try and do it at the same time. So okay, it's still got a long way to go but you can see that it's starting to you know bring it back to a shine again. So I'll end this part here again. I'll try and finish this off at least with the two uh, 40 grit show you what that sort of finish it leaves and whether it would actually need anything else at that point. Okay, 
I used a 240 for quite a little while, uh, but what happened was there were still some quite deep um, little dents in it really, which I wasn't happy with. Um, so I've got out something else. I've got this, which is uh, just a type of oil stone. Um, silicon carbide on the top, aluminium oxide on the bottom. It feels quite coarse, but in actual fact it's quite smooth. Again, you can use a little bit of oil on this uh, if you really want to, but um, I've just used pressure. It actually, because it's a nice flat surface, you know your workpiece is going to come off pretty flat. Um, and it does put a reasonable finish on with um, with a bit of force. So again, just to show that I'm not cheating just with that, this is what I've, I've come on to. Uh, conveniently for me, this is the right size for, for everything. It's two inches wide. Uh, and again, I'm just going to go back and forth. Trying to put even pressure on with my fingers and my thumb at the back there, just to push down. So obviously it's not by by far is it not done, but just seeing if you can you guys might be able to see that. It's starting to, to brighten up in areas. So we'll carry on with this. We're not worried about the finish at the moment, it's just to make sure we've got rid of the blemishes and then we can we can polish it up. Okay, so I've spent uh, about five minutes using this on both sides mainly keeping it flat on the bench actually and doing it that way um, and we end up trying to get it in the right light for you we we'll finish like you can see there just like a ground finish but the main thing is that there's hardly any uh, blemishes or scratches left at all and that's that's what I was aiming aiming to get um, I guess you could go a little bit finer on this with a bit of oil and you'd get what would look like a ground finish actually uh, if you were careful enough and did it nice and straight to get the lines straight. Um, I'm now going to just go back to the to the wet and dries, um, try and get it a little bit more uniform and again I'm not really going to do the swirls now, I just want to go back and forth. Let's try and take some more of the high spots off and you know you're trying to mimic as well the, the machining lines by using the sandpaper. Pressing on particularly hard now, just enough for the for the grit to do its work. I'm trying to make the finish a bit finer, so you know you put more pressure on, you might get more more deeper scratches. Okay, let's have a look. already hopefully that's coming coming across on the on the camera there yeah that's probably the right angle so it still needs a bit of work I can see some bits here but you kind of get the gist of it so I'll change this down to the next grade and repeat the procedure um, then I'll come back and show you what that looks like, and then we'll move on to these. Okay, so I've got the 400 on the block. Um, I've given it a light rub so far, and it's bringing it into quite a decent finish now. Um, typically it looks better in the flesh than it does on the camera, as you can see right now. Um, now, if you were trying to get some of these good machining lines or ground lines back in 
and doing it by hand the way I'm trying to do it. Um, what's important is, of course, trying to keep your motion across this as straight as you can or parallel as you can to the front. If it's slightly off um, or you're rubbing it in a sort of a very, I'll exaggerate it, but a slight diagonal, of course, that always shows up. Um, you can't really see it here, I don't think. But that's exactly what's happened. Um, and I've left watches like this at this point. Um, or, you know, I've not used a scotch bright, should I say. And I've fiddled around for quite a long time to make sure that these are, are nice and uniform. Um, you know, you've got to have patience depending on the quality of the finish that you are trying to achieve. Um, I'll just try and demonstrate as best I can. So they're looking a lot straighter already. There we are. Okay. If I was then going to try and use the hand pads, it's uh, exactly the same process, really. The trouble with this, you know, it's. it's it's a fibrous material uh, and things get do get snagged in it which can be a problem um, but it's you know it's a fi very fine abrasive it might feel coarse but it's it's a very fine abrasive again not a lot of pressure at all. It's a bit more forgiving as well because it's soft. There we have it. It's coming along quite nicely. I can see obviously a few little marks here in the light. However, they are quite deep. Um, there is another grey that I also use, which is this grey one, which again is very fine. Um, I'll actually use this bit. This is going to. It's what the trouble the trouble is. It starts taking off the machining lines. It, well, I could keep calling the machining lines, but you know the. The straight lines you know the finer and finer you go the more you're prepping really for polishing rather than trying to create an effect but yeah you know, I'll just slowly do it with this so you can see So I'll end this video at this point. Um, part two will be about how to tackle uh, the sides here and create the, the contrast of mirror uh, to matte. Um, this has taken me as long as it's taken this video really. Um, maybe a little bit extra I'm looking at my watch now. Um, half an hour, that's all it's taken. Um, you see the techniques techniques I use. Obviously, it's a bit easier because it's a flat top. Uh, if this was 
a round um, uh, watch. There's obviously different techniques for that. Again, thanks for watching and I hope you've uh, you found this useful.